If only my father hadn't been an alcoholic. If only I'd asked for help earlier. If I'd done this, if I'd done that. The guilt of, you know, when someone's gone, there's nothing you can do. I think it's the, the deepest sadness I've ever had, you know. After I, my mum died, I was just falling into that space that's left by her. I didn't want to let go. In states such as depression, you could characterise it as a kind of literal depression. I mean, depression meaning a sort of depression in the earth, you know, a, 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 like a hole, a pit. We've got a group of disorders, depression and other mental disorders that cause enormous disability, and we have treatments, but the treatments still aren't where we want them to be. But we are on the edge of a new era. We're now looking at the opportunities to put medications together with psychotherapies. We can combine those in some interesting new ways, and that really may be the way to optimize outcomes. What we see under psilocybin and magic mushrooms and psychedelics more generally is an ability to step out, to step back, like an astronaut who goes up into space, all of a sudden can see the whole of the Earth and then thinks, why was I worrying about this or that? It allows the mind and the brain to operate really in a more expansive way. During the psilocybin experience, I saw the grief as a kind of poison. I had a realisation that, that I, I was using that to hang on to my, my mum, but that was, that was poisoning me. After the, the experience, the psilocybin experience, I had this sense of optimism, the space around me again. It has such a huge impact. We're trying to find out what's the biological basis of this experience. We're finding that Really, it's, it's two things. It's the breaking down of a particular brain system or network that normally preserves and maintains our sense of self or ego. But what goes alongside the breakdown of that system is a, a new configuration, which could be characterized as a sort of unification in the brain to an extent. We have systems and regions that are normally apart from each other, so separate, disconnected now becoming more, more connected. What you've got to do is to forget all the mumbo-jumbo that happened in the 60, 1960s. This is, a, this is a, a different drug, new drug, being used in a different way, different doses, different people, uh, people with defined, highly defined disease. And this is, this is the great interest, this is the great challenge. In terms of the data that we're seeing, the brain imaging data, after a psychedelic experience. We're finding that the brain and the mind settles back into healthy configurations, that it reforms itself and it seems to reform itself in a healthier way. I think it's incumbent on everyone, the developer, the regulator, the public health doctors, to make sure that the best evidence is gathered for psilocybin so that a good assessment can be made as to whether it is a valuable addition uh, to medicines that we have today. This is a scientific question. We need to be able to do the research to find out what works and what works for whom. But I think for the first time we can begin to see where we want to go. I've been in this field a long time, um, at long enough to get a bit cynical. Uh, in this area, I'm actually quite excited, enthusiastic, to say that maybe there is an opportunity here to provide something of real value to patients who have real need. We need to learn more about how to use it uh, in the most effective way. What are the therapeutic um, approaches surrounding the administration of psilocybin? So ultimately, this could become an option for people. I would have been like a, 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 a kind of stick in the mud, 
now, but I'm more, I'm more like a reed, you know. There's a bit more bend in me.